Hello, my name is Kate Pennington, and I'm a St. Tammany Parish 7th grade ELA teacher. I'm so glad you could join me today. In this lesson, we're going to be talking and introducing a book called The Circuit by Francisco Jimenez. This is actually a memoir, which falls under the nonfiction category, and a memoir is factual stories and memories about someone's life. And like I said, it falls under the nonfiction category. So this is not just a random book that I've chosen. This is actually one of four memoirs that seventh grade students in our parish would have been allowed to choose from. So because we do not have the books with us and we're at home, I've decided to make it a little bit easier and I've chosen one of my favorites, which is The Circuit. Now, because I do not have the actual text with me, um, I had to find a link to the book. So there is a link online to the full text version of the book, and this is the link. So if you wanna pause the video, and then go to that link and type that in. That will take you straight to the text version online. And that's what I'm using. I don't have the book with me um, so that we can be using the same thing. And it's all on there if you go to that link. So just to talk about the book a little bit, it is called The Circuit. It's a memoir, which means that it's kind of like an autobiography, but it's not as long. It's not the whole life of the person, but it is told by the person themselves. So this specific one is about a boy whose family lives in Mexico and they are a migrant family. So the word migrant means that they move around a lot. They're not, they don't have one solid home. Um, and in this book, it's actually their experience moving from Mexico to California to find better work for their family and just a better life in general. So it's told from his point of view when he was a younger boy. And it's going to talk about all the people that he meets, all the things that they go through, all the struggles that they face. And it's very real. So there's lots of fat, sad things that happen. There are good moments, um, but it's a real life portrayal of a kid who experienced this. And now as he's older, he's um, telling us about it from his memory. So what we're going to do today is we are going to make three different reading logs. So reading logs are really important because it helps you remember what you've read. I know everybody zones out sometimes when they're reading. So we're going to make these reading logs so that you can jot down the things that you learn and the things that happen and then go back to them and look at them if you get confused. It helps a lot with reading comprehension. So what I want you to do is get three pieces of paper. It can be loose leaf paper, computer paper, construction paper. I've used computer paper. So when I show you these, just go ahead and pause the video and then you can make them yourself. So the first one is a character chart. So on the top, we have three columns and then three rows. So the first column is the character name, the relation to the main character, and then important details about that character. As you can see, I've already added one. This is our main character. His name is Francisco, and you can pause this if you need to so you can jot it down. Um, he does have a nickname. His parents like to call him Panchito. So um, if you ever hear that, it's the same person, and that's why I put that in that blank. So as you read, you'll add new characters, their relation to the main character, and important things about them. You are going to have more than three characters, so you're going to need to end up either using the back of this or adding new pieces of paper. If you have a stapler at home, you can staple them together. If not, you can just keep them all in one spot. But you will need to add more because there are going to be more than three characters. The second one we're going to make is pretty similar. We have three columns. This is for unknown words that you come across that you don't know the definitions to. So the first row is going to be, or the first column is going to be unknown words, so the word, your guess, and then the actual definition. The reason why you need to have a guess is because that's going to practice context clues. So before you look up the actual definition of the word, you want to try and guess using context clues what it might mean. Now, because our main character is from Mexico, there are going to be some phrases and words that are in Spanish. So when you look them up and you write your word here and you just make a guess, and then you can Google the phrase or the word and then put translation at the end, and it should translate it for you, or you can click on the link and it will translate it for you. So don't, don't, be, um, don't feel bad about not knowing the words. There's a lot of words I don't know either. So we're just going to look them up and then it'll be easy as that. <clears throat> And then the last one is going to be sort of a chapter log, okay? So we have the chapter up at the top, the location, and plot events. You should know what plot means, but if you don't remember, plot are the events that happen in the story. So 
what you're going to do here is you're going to write down important things that happen in that chapter. Now, the location is important because they are a migrant family, which means they're moving around a lot and the location is going to change. So sometimes the location is going to be in multiple places for the chapter. And once again, there are more than three chapters. So you're just going to have to add on, get new pieces of paper for each chapter that you read. All right. And this is going to really help you when you move on to the next chapter so you can remember what happened in the previous chapter. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start reading chapter one today. I'm going to read part of chapter one. If I read the whole thing, this video would be way too long. But as we come across characters and unknown words, I'm going to write them in the charts to show you guys how to do it. And then when you finish chapter one, you'll continue adding things in the charts the way that we did. And then I'm going to give you a writing and reading assignment once this video is over. I will be posting videos weekly. So each time I post, I'll give you an assignment. And then the next week, we'll talk about the chapters that you read, the assignment that you wrote, and then we will read another chapter. Okay? So if you need to, if you're not ready, if you haven't made all your charts, go ahead and pause the video and get your charts done. And then I'm going to start reading the chapter. So make sure that you have your link pulled up and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So once again, the book is called The Circuit. Um, the first chapter is titled Under the Wire and it's told by the, from the point of view of a boy named Francisco, okay? So he is telling the story and it takes place in the 1950s. So it was quite a while ago. Um, so he's much older now, but keep in mind that it's not in our current time period. All right. La Frontera is a word I often heard when I was a child living in El Rancho Blanco, a small village nestled on barren, dry hills several miles north of Guadalajara, Mexico. All right, so right off the bat, there are two Spanish words that you might not know. I do know what they mean because I've looked them up, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, I'm going to pretend that I don't know the word. So the first one we're going to write in our word chart is La Frontera. Okay, so mine looks like this now. All right, and now we're going to make a guess. So using context clues, or maybe just what the word sounds like, make a guess as to what you think the word means. So it's La Frontera. It kind of sounds like the word front. So I'm going to put that as my guess, the front. And then when you look it up, you'll find out that it actually means the border. So it means the border between Mexico and the U.S., but the word itself can mean a border of anything. So once I filled it all in, this is what it looks like. Okay. So he apparently heard a lot about the border when he was living in El Rancho Blanco. Let's go ahead and add that one as well. That's another Spanish word. So El Rancho Blanco kind of sounds like ranch. So I'm going to put ranch, not like the salad dressing, but like a farm where you might keep animals. And then once you look it up, um, it actually translates to the white ranch. So that is where they live in Mexico. So this is what my character chart, I mean, my word chart looks like now. Okay. All right, so let's keep going. I heard it for the first time back in the late 1940s when Papa and Mama told me and Roberto, my older brother, that someday we would take a long trip north cross La Frontera, enter California, and leave our poverty behind. Okay, so we have a new character, and it is Roberto. So I'm going to put his name under character on my character chart. And his relation to the main character is that he is his older brother. All right, so this is what mine looks like now. We don't know a whole lot of important details about him yet, but I made these big so that you can put a lot here. If you don't write very big, you can make it smaller or bigger based on how big you write. Okay. I did not know exactly what California was either, but Papa's eyes sparkled whenever he talked about it with Mama and his friends. Once we cross La Frontera, we'll make a good living in California, he would say, standing up straight and sticking out his chest. Roberto, who is four years older than I, became excited every time Papa talked about the trip to California. He didn't like living in El Rancho Blanco, especially after visiting our older cousin Fito in Guadalajara. So I'm going to add Fito. That's his name, F-I-T-O. And he is 
his older cousin. And he lives in Guadalajara. So Guadalajara is a city in Western Mexico. So he does not live where they live. All right, so this is what mine looks like now. All right. Fito had left El Rancho Blanco. He was working in a tequila factory and living in a two-bedroom house that had electricity and a water well. He told Roberto that he, Fito, didn't have to get up at four in the morning anymore, like my brother, to milk the five cows by hand and carry the milk in a large aluminum can on horse for several miles to the nearest road where a truck would transport it to town to sell. He didn't have to go to the river for water, sleep on dirt floors, or use candle for light. So from that paragraph, we can infer that Francisco and his brother Roberto still have to milk cows and get up really early. They have to go to the river for water, sleep on dirt floors, and use candles for light. So they don't live a very um, great life in terms of having a lot of things like we have. They don't have a a uh, house, they don't have running water, they don't have electricity. From then on, about the only thing Roberto liked about living in El Rancho Blanco was hunting for chicken eggs and attending church on Sundays. So I might add in my character chart for Roberto that he doesn't like living in El Rancho Blanco. So I just put a little bullet. All right, so that's a good stopping point. I would love to read the rest of the chapter with you, but it would be a really long video. So next week, I will read the entire chapter with you, chapter three, but here is your assignment for um, until that video comes out. I want you to finish reading chapter one, and then this is your writing assignment for that chapter. So I want you guys to try to write a minimum five sentence paragraph. Okay, this is your question. Where is Francisco's family going and why are they going there? So we've talked about, the, about this a little bit, but you guys are gonna have to cite evidence, meaning quoted evidence in your paragraph. So it's a little bit of work. This is the acronym that I usually use with my students. Restate and answer the question. Cite evidence, so that's a quote. Explain your evidence. I usually tell my kids at least two sentences and then sum it up, restate your answer. So if you need a pause right there to see this. If you are one of my students, I will have a link on Moodle where you can submit your assignment and I will give you feedback. So just a reminder, this is what you need to do before I post my next video next week. Finish reading chapter one, add to your character chart, add to your word chart, make sure to jot down important plot events that happen for chapter one. And then I want you to read chapter two and continue adding to your chart. So add to your character chart, add to your chapter chart, add to your unknown words, any words that come up that you don't know, okay? And then next week I will be reading chapter three with you. Thank you guys so much for watching this as we will learn about the memoir titled The Circuit by Francisco Jimenez. You did a great job. Remember to keep watching other videos like this one so we can all keep learning together. You can watch lessons daily on STPPS TV or on our website, stpsb.org. See you again soon.